All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome, everyone, to uh, Long Building Technologies. We are a service provider for uh, building technologies in uh, the great Northwest, from Colorado to Alaska. Uh, for Washington here, uh, security along with building intelligence solutions, which includes also uh, control systems. And so today, our long coffee break is really oriented around, do you feel stuck with your control system? Are you stuck with your control system? And, and is there actually a potential pathway out? Uh, and um, I have some experience um, on both sides of customers that uh, absolutely love it and love their solution, love their service, and uh, have no desire to make any changes. And I have other customers who uh, I work with, uh, have worked with previously in other roles or in this role that are just very frustrated. And the number one thing they typically say is, there's nothing I can do about it. And typically they get frustrated with one of three things. One is either they do not feel like they have a good service provider, uh, that the service level of service they expect for that partic particular product is subpar and they don't have any other options for service providers. Secondarily, um, often if it's really old legacy, uh, you know, they're looking at making some changes, but they have a current provider and they feel like they have to go with that current provider to make those upgrades uh, with the old to the new. And then the third often, uh, and it's becoming more prevalent with some change of technology, is where a customer is uh, um, has a certain product and that manufacturer is moving them to the next generation of products. And they just don't feel like they have a choice uh, but to go down that path uh, to the newer product. And so uh, today, um, I would love to be able to just talk to you about some of the options. And uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to stop sharing and, uh, and actually uh, uh, just show the, uh, uh, show the whiteboard. And so what, um, uh, what I'd love to do is be able to um, just show you and talk to you about uh, control systems, control systems architectures, and um, and be able to, to diagram out some things. And so uh, typically on a control system, you got three levels. Uh, you have some server at the top. And then below that, you've got some sort of network where you have a controller operating a piece of equipment. Uh, an air handling unit, a chiller, a boiler. And then below that, you've got typically a field level network where you've got VAV boxes or fan uh, uh, power boxes or, you know, um, you know, heat recovery or not heat recovery, uh, heat pumps, or you might even have, uh, you know, now with chill beams, right? You've got some other controls, uh, smaller controllers down at a at a floor level network. And so typically the older hierarchy is this goes through the equipment controller and then goes up to the head end server. Um, now we also have this ability to go back net all the way down from the server down to an individual VAV box controller. And so that opens up uh, whether it's talking back net, uh, if it's talking back net MSTP, back net IP, you can get down to lower level devices. And uh, now there's more and more devices coming out with IP enabled um, controls. The challenge is, is a customer doesn't feel like they have any options here because frankly, um, these have proprietary protocols uh, for multiple systems. You know, Siemens, Johns Controls uh, have traditionally had proprietary protocols uh, between these layers. Uh, we've also seen uh, where now it goes to BACnet, uh, but even with BACnet, they're afraid to make a change because they feel like they're, this whole system needs to all go together uh, from their head end to the controller for the equipment down to 
the individual device. And so um, that can change um, and that is available. There is a product out there um, called Niagara. Niagara is the most ubiquitous control solution out there in the market. Uh, almost every product manufacturer has OEM that product uh, and it is available to lay on top of control systems, almost any type of control system. So they have a server and then they have a physical uh, hardware that can be used. Uh, but the server level can be used to uh, take over a head end. And where we typically would recommend this is if you're really unhappy with the service provider and this head end is a older nature, uh, then let's go ahead and put in parallel Niagara and then start to take over uh, anything below that. <clears throat> and so over time, you can then look at cutting this off and rerouting this whole trunk over to your Niagara server. Uh, that is one option. If you're talking proprietary protocols, there's a lot of uh, options for protocol um, integration drivers uh, that can be put in place uh, that can start to pick up the protocols from these. If they're already BACnet MSTP, we can easily convert them to BACnet IP with a, uh, a driver or a um, router. If it's already BACnet uh, IP or MSTP, um, sometimes in some of the controls uh, providers out there, they can actually firmware upgrade and flash upgrade this particular device right here from an older protocol to uh, BACnet. And so um, you can get it to BACnet, MSTP, or IP just through firmware because it's newer technology, but it was still using older proprietary protocols uh, in the firmware. And so sometimes that's a very economical way to extend your life cycle of keeping this uh, as a infrastructure, uh, but just doing a firmware and paying that original manufacturer to do a firmware. And then now you can pick it up uh, up the top end. Sometimes you've got really old controllers um, and you wanna to start to look at replacing them. You know, that is a definitely an option. But the first step towards potentially breaking this uh, out of that is to look at your head end and look at a migration towards that. What it also can do is if you have multiple control systems and you've got something else over here, uh, we can start to look at pulling in from two or three different types of control systems. You might have an Allerton and a Johns Controls or a Siemens and a DizTech. You know, when you start to bring those together and have one ubiquitous user interface, it can really help uh, your operators. The next thing that you can do uh, as part of that is, is also look at picking up uh, your controls at the field level network. Uh, so often they say, well, I can't break it because I got too much of this down here. I've got 400 VAV boxes or, you know, uh, chill beam devices or whatever it might be. And so from here, uh, I might want to replace this, but I just have too much of this and it's too costly. And what we can do is put in a physical JACE. And that physical JACE is a Niagara product. Uh, it's a hardware, piece of hardware that now connects in. And we can pick up that proprietary protocol or we can pick up that MSTP trunk. And then we can now bring that up into Niagara. And so it's a path then that you can now pluck off and remove this connection from this equipment controller to the field level network, and then start to migrate your equipment level controllers or start to migrate your uh, field level controllers. And so it just gives you optionality. And so really what we want to do is just make sure we help educate on the different levels, right? You've got your head end, your server level, you've got your equipment level controllers, and then you've got your field level controllers. And depending on the system, whether it's a Siemens, Johns Controls, Allerton, whatever it might be, there are paths to move out of that particular situation that you might wanna to move to an open system that you have multiple providers, service providers, 
that can provide service on that type of product and you're not locked in. And then you're upgrading technology and then you can mix and match technology. So you can have one building this and another building that. You can have one air handling unit and a FLN as this and another as this and start to bring and merge those together with a common core platform. So uh, with that, I'd like to just stop and open it up to any questions there might be. Uh, it looks like there is um, a question here. How old would you consider old for controllers? That's a great question. Typical lifespan of a controller uh, in the building automation world is about 10 years. Um, some of them, should we got 30 year old Barbara Coleman out there running. I know Siemens has some really, uh, really good product um, that's been running forever, but there's cybersecurity uh, challenges with that. There's how do you wholesale change that stuff out? You know, maybe some of it can, can continue to run for another 10 years and, you know, stuff starts to fail. And is there a migration path to be able to just replace one at a time as they fail? And uh, we can definitely uh, help you. We got a customer that we're doing that with right now uh, that as a controller fails, it's got head in Niagara and then it's got really old stuff and it's got some brand new stuff uh, coming together. Um, what you also uh, run into is, you know, really old Ibex uh, that's an Allerton product. Um, it's at the tail end. It has no real um, good user interface. And some of that product um, that's at that age has limited functionality. And those limited functionalities can also drive uh, rebates. There's a lot of rebate um, ability to go and replace that and have it partially funded by the utility. So. Great question. Is there any other questions that anybody might have out there? All right. I have a question about HVAC stuff, but Long does um, provide a maintenance on building access systems, right? Access control as far as um, building security and badge swiping. Correct. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, we actually we have a, and we have a Linnell system. Yep. Um, I believe. Okay. I will probably be reaching out to you. Great. Yeah, we provide access control, video, uh, and building automation services. Um, and sometimes those work together. Sometimes they're very independent. Uh, but yeah, we'd be happy to talk to you about uh, where you're at and, and uh, how we might be able to help you. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And, and there's often in the same, you know, you know situation on access control, you know, people feel like they're locked in and sometimes there's, you know, good migration plans to be able to open up some of that as well. So um, this topic is very relevant, no matter what technology and Long's core is about open, giving you optionality uh, so that you're not stuck and locked in into a solution. Yeah, that's great. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'll give uh, one more last shout out for questions. Okay. Well, hey, uh, this was not meant to be a deep dive by any means. It's meant to just give you kind of an idea if you are stuck, how maybe uh, some of those options could look, but we would be happy to sit down and do a full audit with your system, with your building engineers talking about it and exploring different options and really helping you look at too, is there uh, is this a better cost effective solution than, you know, sticking with where you're at uh, currently. Uh, so if you would like to know more, feel free to call me, uh, call along. Um, we would be happy to help uh, explore that with you. Let me share the, the last screen here. Uh, and uh, so my information is C Engelbrecht at long.com. That's C E N G E L B r-e-c-h-t at long.com be happy to be able to uh, dive deeper with you uh, next week exciting uh, if you have any video uh, open eye is the uh, product uh, next week we're going to talk about a little bit more for video and how that works um, would love to have you come back uh, and then the week after that another building controls topic so please keep uh, returning if you want to know more and this will be saved and put on our YouTube channel uh, after this. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you for joining. Uh, 
really appreciate it and look forward to meeting each of you in person sometime. Take care, everyone.